It's time for another Dirt Daily. I'm back in the shop with my little green flat fender. This is my 1946 Jeep CJ2A. Uh, I spent a week out in Moab, Utah for Easter Jeep Safari, and it was a lot of work. I'm doing a project with Best Top, the company that makes tops for Jeeps. It's actually their 70th anniversary, and they're giving away a flat fender. So I was running around all week doing videos with this flat fender, videos that you'll see in the future. Plus, uh, then Friday, I went to the Friday Flat Fender Fun Run. I just kind of went to the beginning of it where everybody meets up and then they all left and went and ran, ran a trail. And I didn't go because I didn't have a flat fender to go. And But the good thing was it got me motivated. It got me excited to come home and work on this, keep working on this little Jeep. Plus, everybody loves this little Jeep. This thing, I bought it, not running. And in fact, the wheels weren't even turning. We did a couple of videos where I got the transfer case loose. The last time I worked on it, I got the engine loose. So everything is turning now. And so the next step is to figure out uh, how to make it run. This Jeep has a, kind of a major frame crack right down here in front of the passenger front shock. And I really want to work on that. I really want to fix it. But I talked to my buddy, Frank. You guys might have remember Frank. And he was like, don't fix the frame until you know if the engine's good. And I was like, that's actually kind of a good point because if the engine is good, then we work on the frame in a different way than if the engine's bad. If the engine's bad, we're gonna pull the engine out and then we can get all the way around that crack. If the engine's good, we just probably remove this fender and try to fix that crack. So moving right along with trying to get the engine running, we know the engine turns. Uh, I think today's project is we're gonna see if we make the starter run. If the starter can spin the engine, that allows us to do a couple things. We can do a compression test and figure out if the cylinders have any compression, which is important if you want them to run. Um, we can also start figuring out the electrical. These Jeeps originally would have been six volts and some people are like, ah, you gotta leave it six volt. And other people are like, why? Uh, make it modern. I am of the frame of mind that if I'm changing something on it, I might as well change it to something that I can find those parts more readily. So I will most likely want to change it all to 12 volts if it isn't changed already. Um, what does that mean? Well, currently has a generator. That generator I'd probably swap out for either a 12 volt generator or a 12 volt alternator. Uh, there's a amp meter on the dash. If I change it to an alternator, I'll probably change it to a volt meter instead of an amp meter. I mean, if I change it, yes, if I change it to an alternator, I'll probably get a bolt meter. Um, and then headlights, turn signals, tail lights, all of that stuff. Tail light, I think there's just one light. It's really not a whole lot of stuff. Uh, just little bulbs and uh, then all of the ignition. You'll want to check, make sure all of your ignition is 12 volts. But I'm kind of getting ahead of myself on the voltage. Right now, today's project is can we make the starter turn? Is the starter still good? Um, which, I mean, a starter is pretty robust. They do fail, but sometimes, well, there's different components to the starters. So let's dive into this thing and figure out if it will spin, and then we can make the engine. What does a starter do? Well, the idea of the starter is that it turns the engine, and it also starts turning your uh, distributor and it starts the it gets the engine to start running um, the starter is basically a motor an electric motor and it has this piece that is kind of like a protrusion and it it's like a gear that pops out and spins simultaneously so when you turn the key uh, it sends power down to the starter and the starter um, starts spinning and it sticks out this protrusion which has gear teeth on it and then those gear teeth protrusion line up with your flywheel, which is the big metal wheel on the back of the engine. Most of you are gonna know this, some of you won't. I'm gonna make it as simple as I can because I want kids who don't know anything about engines to maybe learn something. I'm definitely not an engine master, but these engines are pretty simple. So you have this starter, um, almost everything has it these days, unless it's an electric vehicle, but we're not even getting into that. Um, so you have this starter, and power from the battery runs to the starter. But the starter doesn't 
it's not a direct current. It's not a constant current from the battery to the starter. The current has to go through a switch. And the switch is known as a solenoid on these older Jeeps. And the solenoid switch or starter solenoid. And the solenoid usually mounts either to the firewall or to the inner fender. Mine is actually buried back behind all of this stuff. This is like the air cleaner and some like old vacuum hose that someone had hooked up to run the air cleaner over to the carburetor. So I'm going to start by removing all of this so we can actually see the components we're working with. The starter solenoid, the starter, and then we're going to have to find a battery. Here is the carburetor. And then there's this tube that runs across, and there's usually a factory air cleaner sits right here. Uh, this is some sort of hodgepodge home brew version of an air cleaner. And there's a piece of tube here, this corrugated tube. And this tube is actually, I believe, old vacuum, like the old hose off of a vacuum cleaner. So I'm going to start by getting all of this out of the way. This and this and here's like some sort of wire that was attached to this tube. I'm not saying this is a bad design, I'm just saying I think we can make it better when it's time to redo this. So all of this junk will get out of the way. That can stay for now. Um, next, I want to get this air cleaner off of the firewall and out of the way so that we can gain access down to the starter and down to the solenoid, which is actually buried back behind here. So. Here we go. This is the old air cleaner setup, and it's a total jerry-rigged mess, and we'll come up with a better solution for that. But for now, we'll just set that out of the way. Maybe we'll even find an original oil bath air cleaner to go in. All right, let's look at all of this mess. This is the starter this big cylinder and you can see there's two bolts back there and there those are where it attaches to the flywheel bell housing and then inside there is the flywheel where the gear this is your starter solenoid and you can see there's some wires running to it there's actually this big red wire that is all frayed here and then there's this, and then another big red wire that runs over to the starter. And then there's a small wire here running to uh, this one side of the solenoid. And then there's another small wire right there. And the way this system works is this wire runs to the battery, this or the positive terminal of the battery. This wire runs to the positive terminal on the starter. And then this little wire is your signal wire. And when you send 12 volts to that, it connects a switch. It's basically like a big light switch. And this part is the switch. This is power in and this is power out. So when that gets power, it connects these two. And then that sends power down to the starter. And this is only on the start signal from your ignition. This is not on the run signal. So when you turn the key to start, it will, it's basically a momentary switch under your dash, sends power to this, and then it'll connect these two, and the starter will spin. Now, we have a couple things we can do. One, we can replace this garbage and that, and move the solenoid over to the fender, where it probably should be, so it's easier to get to. Or, we can just hook everything up the way it is now, and put a jumper right to that little guy right there and see if the starter spins. So even though this wire is chewed up and junky, I think we're going to start by just seeing if we can make it work. Then we'll come back and clean it up. I'm just going to live right here. 
Here is the ground uh, negative terminal. It's going to run up to the engine block. And then this is the positive terminal, which goes to one side of the starter solenoid. Now, I want to disconnect a few things before I test out the starter. This wire that is the signal wire, the one that go goes from your ignition down to that middle post on the starter solenoid, I want that out of the way. So I'm going to disconnect that. My reason being that I don't know if this is going to, I don't want anything to back feed when I jump this. I just want to test the starter. So this wire, I don't want it to go up underneath the dash. Maybe there's a short, this thing's been sitting for who knows how long rodents, squirrels, whatever, may have been chewing on these terminals. So I'm getting this wire out of the way. I did take a photo of the wires before I disconnected it. Most likely I will be rewiring this, and it's a pretty simple system, so it's not that hard to figure out. You can find a CJ2A wiring diagram on the internet, and it's there's not a lot. There's like headlights, ignition, gauges. That's pretty much it. Um, so, but uh, if you are new to this and you are taking stuff apart and you're not really sure how it all goes back together, you might want to take a couple photos. Just snap them on your phone um, and then you can start disconnecting. The other thing is this side of the uh, starter solenoid where the positive battery terminal goes, there's a wire that feeds off of that. So that's a constant 12 volts. That's probably going up to the ignition switch, uh, and then when you turn the key, it sends power back down to that start button. I also want to disconnect that for the same reason. Like all of these wires, old, spongy, wrapped in electrical tape, patched together, chewed by mice and rats. So if we can get it down to just the positive, negative, and the starter solenoid, then we can actually test those three parts. Now our starter solenoid, we got rid of the signal wire. We got rid of this other wire that was uh, going underneath the positive side. So all we have is the positive from the battery, uh, the feed down to the starter, which is only activated when power is sent to this solenoid through this signal port right here. This starter solenoid, uh, they're not that expensive. If this thing doesn't work, we can probably go to any of our local auto parts stores and find a three terminal uh, starter solenoid. Some of them have a second terminal on them. And, and also, I don't know why they mounted it here. It's probably because they found some short wires. I would rather lengthen this wire and put the starter solenoid up here on the fender. I like the starter solenoid up on the fender because if you have a problem with it, or if you want to jump it, um, hot wire it, you can do that when it's on the fender much easier. Uh, there's a coil here. I don't think the coil is supposed to be here. I think the coil is actually supposed to be mounted up here on the block. Um, there's a couple studs sticking out of the block where the coil could mount. And then there is the voltage regulator for the generator mounted right here. All of these wires from the generator and the voltage regulator are cut telling me that there was probably some charging issues, but I'm not really worried about that because right now we're just trying to get the starter to spin. The other thing is when you're testing the starter, A, don't have it in gear, B, lift it up on jack stands, or in my case, I'm gonna lift it up with the lift, get all the tires off the, off the ground. Because this vehicle has been sitting a while, even if you take it out of gear, if something's messed up in the transmission or in the clutch and you crank over the engine, it may actually start moving the vehicle. So do yourself a favor, um, get it off the ground so that if the tires start spinning for some unknown reason, it doesn't run you over. So I'm gonna lift it up with the lift, get it off the ground, and then I'm gonna find a battery to put in here and hook it up to these two terminals. I needed a battery. I found this little Odyssey battery. It does not have top terminals, it has side terminals and I had to actually screw in these terminals. They're just screw in 
terminals, and so I got these and screwed them in to hook up the battery to it. My thoughts originally was to drop it right down in there into the battery box, which is right here beside the radiator, but when I did that, the positive terminal that I screwed on, on the side was really close to the radiator. Not a good plan because this thing shifts around, you go four-wheeling, bounces around. Um, it's most like it could hit that radiator and then short out and you'll have a fire and all types of problems. But this is an Odyssey and you can actually mount these on their side. I don't know that that's the best option for long term, but for what I'm doing today, I'm just going to set it in here on its side. Uh, I probably need to find the right battery to fit down in there. This was just one that I had. I don't even know how old it is. Put it on the charger, charged it up, and it seems to be good to go. So I'm going to drop it right down in here. Next, I am going to put the positive terminal on. Both terminals are on. So right now I should have 12 volts going to this terminal right here on the starter cylinder. So I'm gonna grab a jumper wire and I'm gonna try jumping from the positive terminal down to the signals port on the starter solenoid. And that should tell the solenoid to close the circuit and then send 12 volts down to the starter. Here you can see how the negative runs up to the engine block. And then the positive runs over here to the starter solenoid. And then that little terminal right there is where we're gonna send power. So I found this wire, which has like a alligator clip on one end and then this has an alligator clip on one end and just a ring terminal on the other end. You're going to hook the alligator clip right here. And then if we touch this to that right there, the engine should spin if everything is connected right and if the starter is good. Huh, we are not getting anything. We might not be getting a good connection right here. Let me try this again. Put this. Right on there. So, we are getting you can hear this thing clicking, but it doesn't sound like the starter wants to turn. So uh, I'm going to try the next step and make sure that all of our connections are good and that we're actually getting 12 volts down to there. Okay, I grabbed a power probe, hooked it up to the battery. We definitely have a ground there. We definitely have a ground at the starter. We definitely have 12 volts on one side. There it goes. So. That jumper cable that I had was not really cutting the mustard. And what I needed was a better way to connect to the solenoid and get actually hot 12 volts. Um, this negative battery terminal wire is not really getting tight. And it probably, there's actually, believe it or not, there's differences. Some of these are negative and some of them are positive and the negative is a little bit smaller and it usually fits on a little bit tighter and if you put a positive one on even if you crank it all the way down it won't always tighten up on the terminal so I'm going to press that on and then I'm gonna grab some vice grips and 
That feels better. Now, when I jumped it the last time, I saw a spark down here at the positive or at the negative cable. I'm pretty sure both of these cables need replaced, but it doesn't seem like the starter or the solenoid need replaced. We're going to try this again. Oh, here's the other thing I forgot to mention. We still don't have the spark plugs in, and if you have oil or grease or anything, gas, whatever, in the engine cylinder, uh, when you crank it over, it's going to start blowing all of that out. I can see the rag that I had laid over the spark plug holes blowing around. Um, luckily, I had that rag there because if there was oil in there and I was cranking this over, it would be spraying oil all over the place if there was oil or gas or anything down in those. That is why when you hydrolock your engine or you drive it in, into a bunch of water, you pull the spark plugs out and you crank it over and it sprays all of the water out. But um, this is a good sign. Starter solenoid is pretty good. Our starter is pretty good. Our cables are garbage. So we can go buy those easily at a local auto parts store. And I think we will replace both the positive um, to the solenoid and from the solenoid down to the starter, as well as the ground cable that runs down to the engine block. Even though they're working, uh, they're kind of messed up and this one's all chewed up. So I think we'll replace all that stuff and put the solenoid maybe up here where it's easier to access. And maybe what we'll do is we'll pull the coil off, put the solenoid over here where it should be, and then we can put the coil over there on the side of the engine block. Plus, here's the other thing. Um, most of the time the coil will have some markings on it and that'll tell you if the coil is 12 volts or six volts. Is it bad to run everything with a 12 volt battery if it's set up for six volts? Yes, but I'm told that the starter is not really a concern. The starter seems to be fine, whether it's six volt, whether it's a six volt starter or a 12 volt starter if you run it on 12 volts. So, uh, I think we're gonna move a couple things around and, but I feel like that's a victory. We have the starter that we know is working and we have a solenoid that we know is working. So then we can, move on from that and try and figure out how to get everything else turning. Um, let's get some wiring on this thing. There you can see how I clamped the negative battery terminal tight with some vice grips and everything else was spinning. Up there was that rag that was kind of blowing in the wind, which I was lucky that I had that up there. Um, everything was turning, so that's a good sign. This is the generator. Now, most of the time these old generators are six volts and there are some that are 12 volt. It has a tag right there and I tried to read the numbers and uh, I couldn't really make out what they were. So I will probably end up replacing that and going to all 12 volts. I am removing the coil from the ignition system to try and figure out what voltage it is. Well, look at this, right there, 12 volts. So, this is what I'm figuring out. The generator is not hooked up to this voltage regulator. Um, all of these wires were cut, chewed or cut or something happened to them. So I don't know if this generator is 12 volts or six volts. The coil seems to be 12 volts, which is cool because that's kind of what we wanted was to convert this to 12 volts. Um, I want to probably move this coil back up over here onto the side of the engine where it should be. And then that will also help free up a spot for our starter solenoid. But um, yeah, I'm gonna see if I can remove this little bracket. There we go. Here we have the coil 
bracket. Which would normally go up on the side of the engine block over here. Okay, I did a little bit of a rewire on the Jeep. I got rid of all the old battery cables. I put new battery cables on. So there's a new battery cable running from the starter up to the starter solenoid. And there's a new battery cable from the starter solenoid running up to the battery. That's on the positive side. I also put a new uh, ground negative side battery from the battery up to the engine block. I moved the starter solenoid from underneath where the air cleaner was out to the fender. Uh, that allows me to actually gain access to it if I need to rewire it or change anything. And the holes for the starter solenoid on the fender were perfectly lined up with the holes that used to hold the coil. So I was able to use those holes. I didn't have to drill new holes in the Jeep. And then I moved the coil up to the engine block. The engine bo block has two studs that stick out of it. I did have to clean those studs with a die, but I got the coil up on the engine block where it belongs. So everything is now lined up where it needs to be. Plus, I did another little hot rod trick where I got a little momentary switch and I wired that up onto the firewall. Um, it's actually running off of a wire that it has a fuse in it, and that allows me to start the engine by pushing this momentary switch right here on the firewall. Why would I want to do that? Well, if I want to do a compression test, if I want to crank it over and watch the fuel pump, see if the fuel pump's working, basically if I want to do anything in the engine bay and crank it over, I can do one of two things. I can either hot wire it like I was before, or now I just have this push button momentary switch that allows me to crank over the engine. Uh, the ignition is not hooked up right now. The fuel pump is not hooked up right now. So all we're doing right now is just cranking over the engine to make sure that the starter works and we have rewired everything. Now that little momentary switch, that's easy to remove down the road, so I don't need to keep that there forever. Or I can actually run it inside and use it as the starter button if I wanted to put a starter button on this. But for now, I can push this button and it'll crank over the engine. <laughs> Plus, there's something that's really kind of cool that you have to see right in down here. So check this out. Right down in there is a big pile of dirt. And that is, there's a little access hole to the bell housing. And all that dirt is coming out of this little access hole. You can just kind of see it in there. So if I push this momentary switch, watch what happens at that hole. Some sort of critter got into the bell housing and made a nest. And now when the engine cranks over, it spits all of his, his little house out, which is kind of unfortunate for him. But uh, I'm just going to hook the shop back up and suck all that dirt up out of there. But now we know that the starter works. Uh, we have a momentary switch button that we can press to crank it over when we want to do a compression test. I have a battery. Maybe not the perfect battery, but it works for now because I don't really... Even though these Odysseys are fine being mounted on their side, I think it would probably be better to get one that sits in here a little bit better. And I moved the starter solenoid and the coil. So I think that's a win. Wow. That bell housing is just chock full of mouse nests. All right, we put on a new battery, put a bunch of cables on. We know the engine can crank over. What are we gonna do next time? Well, uh, we could probably change the oil again. We put fresh oil in it after I drained it the first time, but I ordered a brand new oil filter, so we'll deal with that next time. Um, we probably would need to look into the fuel pump. Does the mechanical fuel pump actually pump fuel? And of course, I think we should do a compression test. What's that really gonna tell us? It might make us sad, but at least we'll have some idea on if this engine's gonna run or not. And then there's all the ignition and all the other stuff, but I think those are kind of our next steps. Maybe we are looking at uh, making it run next time. And then there's also the 12 volt alternator generator problem. Um, I know there's kits out there to just put on like a one wire GM style alternator, which is probably the easiest, simplest solution. And then I also will need to check all the headlights and turn things. There's still a bunch left to do to make this Jeep run, but we are chipping away at it one little project at a time.
pretty stoked. This is a fun project. It's like you just work on one little thing at a time, and then we'll have to deal with an air cleaner, air box, air filter of some sort, and then there's a bunch of other wiring garbage that's kind of laying all over the place in here that need tidied up, cleaned up. But that's kind of fun. So chipping away at it. All right, that's it for this third daily. We'll see you guys next time. Sorry, mouse, you're moving out.